Hello guys, good day. This is Anne of Reinforce Me Club. Today we are going to talk about how to build positive habits by designing your environment. So you are going to get a, like simple tips on how to build and maintain good habits and avoid, because this is environment by design, avoid the, the bad ones, the temptations. So there's just two things. The first one is make it easy. The second one is the opposite. Make it impossible. So when I said make it easy, it has something to do with uh, reducing the friction or the barriers in to starting or maintaining a good habit. That would increase your likelihood to do that good habit over and over again. So when I say removing the barriers, for example, when you are into working out, make sure that you prepare your you, you lay out your workout clothes, your workout gears a night before going to the gym. And you know sometimes we're not hundred percent every day. Sometimes we wake we walk up like shit. We don't want to do anything. But then when you see your you know workout stuff ready, ready to wear, wear just on the corner, it reminded you about you know that that's already a clue clue and then that will start you to trigger you know, triggering give you triggering feelings to really take you know wear that workout clothes and head into the car and then go to the gym that's already a starting point it's inviting you to go to the gym when you see your workout clothes just lay out there on the corner so it reminds you to go to the gym and that's that makes you easier to go to the gym because there, this, there's already a reminder other than the clock that you're supposed to be in the gym by 10 o'clock in the morning. That's just for example. Environment by design, you know, so this actually means that you have or you get to rearrange your environment to, you know, for you to be able to do or to build or enhance your good habits easily. So make everything more accessible. Like, for example, if you are into reading regularly, like for me, although I'm not a perfect person, I'm not the smartest one, but I want to read because I want to feed this this, this mind. And, uh, you know, my book is already on the desk. I don't have to look for the next book to read. It's already there. All I have to do is to open it and skim or read five to 10 pages. Sometimes when, you know, I'm really 100%, 20 pages or 30 pages in one sitting. It's also important to start small. I don't have to read the book, the entire book for one sitting. I'm not, you know, some people would prefer to do that, but I, it, it, it depends on your intention. But for me, I only read because I want to feed my mind something new every day. That's how I think. I want to feed my mind because uh, if I learn something, it actually reduces my stress. And when when I learn something, it helps me gain knowledge about my future decisions. Or you know, anytime anytime when I need the knowledge, I can use those knowledge anytime, anywhere. It's already in my head. All I have to do is to apply it. So making it favorable, easy by design. The book is already there on the desk beside my my bed. Just all I have to do before I sleep is that sit down on the desk and open the book. I'd rather I'd rather read one or two pages with uh, a good comprehension, comprehension, good understanding, rather than to read 20, 50 pages of the entire book wherein I don't get anything. I only get uh, like 5%, 10% absorption from the book. I'd rather have one or two pages with good understanding rather than, you know, I'm into quality, not quantity. So that's one way of environment by design and removing by removing the barriers and make your good habits easily accessible without even thinking. It's already there. It's a starting point. And it triggers you to really just, you know, go to the desk, sit down and open the book or just look at your bag, your workout clothes there hanging, ready for you to wear, reminding you to go to the gym, even if you don't like to, but that's already a starting point. That's already triggering you to go to the gym. That's environment by design. And it doesn't mean that you're, you know, I would agree that nobody's perfect unless you really have to, like, 
you really have to be uh or, or you call this compliant you really have to be like obedient to your good habit it takes a commitment to maintain a habit and you know one way to show this is to start small and in the most part show up i remember the two minute rule from this book atomic habits so for example starting small and showing up you know there are times that uh i'm really tired after work and uh i there are three top three things that i i get to uh to do for the entire day to make myself uh, to, to tell myself like yeah i'm I I completed my task for the day. I'm I'm okay. I'm complete. I feel fulfilled by doing this top, top three things. And part of it, one of it, is reading. So there are times when I got stressed from work and I got too tired. So what I do is that I just sit on the desk before I sleep and then open the book. Just w- read one topic. And that's it. I close the book and go to sleep. I don't have to read the f- five pages, 20 pages, 10 pages. I sat on the desk to show up to my habit that I'm still committed, that I'm still willing to to continue to have that habit in my life by showing up. It's just that today I feel tired. And then the next day I make it up. I read 10 pages, 20 pages, as much as I want in uh, 20 to 30 minutes, and then I go to sleep. So if you want to keep a habit if you want to really install it, do it for for the rest of your life, make it easy, make it accessible, remove the barriers, and always make a commitment to show up. Even if you don't do it 100%, just be there. Just be there. It takes commitment to to maintain positive habits for the rest of your life. You know, know, by designing your environment, you don't really need uh, self-discipline. It's it's no brainer when everything, all the good things are available in your environment, even people. If you stay away from toxic people, ambivalent people, then it'll be easier for you to really spot who are the people who is who, who is rooting for you. Even you're not in the room. That's part of environment by design. Picking the right people who are who wants the best for you. Even if you don't you have to read you have to hear some things which are nice but you really need to hear that you really need to hear it they're going to tell you they're going to help you grow so part of it is environment and picking the right people in your life so the second thing is make it impossible so make it impossible in doing those bad habits or those habits which are not serving you at all serving your growth like for example unhealthy foods so Make it impossible means removing temptations and creating obstacles that prevent you from engaging those habits. For example, yes, yeah, I've mentioned earlier, unhealthy foods. So it's way better not to buy unhealthy foods and stock them in the fridge or put them around the corner in your house. So instead of unhealthy foods, it's way better to buy healthy foods and make them available anywhere in the house as you wish or in the fridge stuck them in the fridge make it easier for you to 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 really cook healthy foods to eat healthy so just buy healthy foods well as to me this is just for example you don't have to really emulate my lifestyle you can make it but you can use it you know for your own advantage like for example i i love eating ice cream before I got a, I can, I can able to eat the half or whole gallon in one sitting. You know my favorite Rocky Road and chocolate fa- flavor. Gosh, so I realized that it's not healthy really to eat an ice cream every week, and so so I, I also don't want to really deprive myself from that. So instead of buying a gallon of ice cream, I bought a little, you know, uh, an ice drop, you know, a little ice cream. That you just have to eat, taste it, and it's sweet, it's delicious, but it's only a small serving, an ice drop, little ice cream, like a, a little a smaller than Magnum. You know, it's quite handy and I can move over, uh, I can move around the house while eating it just to have a taste of ice cream. And I don't want to deprive, deprive myself from those uh, sweet foods entirely, but I just limit. And, uh, you know, although... Another example, although I love Doritos, 
cheese flavor. I don't make them available at home. When I badly need or I badly miss Doritos, I just buy a, a little pack of it, little packet, and then I eat them in one sitting. You know, just a small packet, and then I hide I hide them in a, a drawer, which is not visible to me. So I ended up, you know, in I ended up consuming the entire pack, which is six pa uh, small packets. So I ended up consuming the entire Doritos for like two weeks when I remember what, when I just thought about Doritos. So it's just hidden there somewhere, not accessible, somewhere not visible to my eyes. So I'm just tricking myself, to be honest. So making it impossible means restructuring your environment. Modify your surroundings to discourage the unwanted behavior. So unwanted behavior designing your environment another example for that is that you know i am addicted to some apps i have longer screen time now but when i'm making contents i stay away from my phone my phone is just in the other room i make rules to myself that i only touch my phone and scroll when i finish a one major task like this, making contents. And I'm, I don't have an access to my phone at this time until I finish this thing. So that's the rule. Uh, and constraints, you know, implementing constraints to myself. And you can also use that. If you want to reduce your screen time before, before bed, it's way better to really not sleeping beside your phone. Your phone has to be miles away, has to be like a distant from you. Just around your home, but not reachable while you're in bed to reduce your screen time. Or you can make a rules, which is another way of implementing constraint, you know, rules on making habit, you know, pleasant habits, addicting habits difficult. You can also make a rule to yourself that by nine o'clock in the evening, no more screen time. You can do anything, read talk to your spouse, to your partner, anything except screen time if you want to lessen your screen time before sleeping. So that's you can also make rules for yourself other than restructuring your environment, putting your phone away, a distance away from you, away from your bed. And, uh, you know, you can also make substitute to, if you've already adapted a an undesirable habit. So, you know, I, I want to share the story to you that, you know, it's about my grandpa uh, trying, doing his best to quit smoking. So he he successfully did quit smoking. It's just that the replacement, the substitute to that habit is eating a bunch of candies, which is wild. You can also make another substitution, you know, when you want to quit smoking. You might as well want to, like, uh, drink loads of water, anything that you can touch when you feel like you want to smoke or avoid the places, the environment, the, the people which triggers your feeling, including the activities, you know, which triggers your feeling to smoke. Sometimes stress can trigger smoking, but, you know, you can head on to your replacement. You can drink water, chewing gum, or you can do something else. You can condition yourself. And... While me, I, I want to share this. I want to share a story about me, although I'm not a perfect person. I, I was, yeah, I was drinking yeah, alcohol before when I was younger, and uh, it's just that, yeah, I decided to quit. But I replace that. You know, I like to drink a lot. I replaced the habit with drinking fluids. Before I drank, uh, like juice. Which is which is heavy on me, uh, you know the the commercialized juice, it's it's not healthy. So I replace it with a a natural juice, an orange juice, but still heavy on me. Even the re yeah, I could I could make a, a pineapple juice without sugar out of that, and it's it's hard for me. It's hard because you need to really blend the you know make an you need to make an effort to blend the pineapple juice and the make a smoothie, and I don't want to make an effort out from it. So instead of yeah, I tried to replace drinking alcohol with all types of fluids, and right now I ended up keep drinking tea, <laughs> green tea or 
weak tea, any tea, for weak. It has to be weak. I don't like to drink uh, like uh, concentrated tea. So this is the natural tea. And when I like to, when I feel like I want to drink something, I just drink it. Tea and hot water. So that's finding a substitute. Or, you know, to make things impossible, you know, to make the bad habits impossible for you to perform, one way to do that is to seek support. You know, you can make your spouse, your partner, your best friend, even your enemy as an accountability partner that they're going to call you out when you do the bad, when they see you doing the bad habits. You can, you know, your spouse can give you a call, can call you out when he, when he sees you drinking alcohol too much, drinking, you know, grabbing, stocking alcohol in the fridge or somewhere, somewhere in the, in the house. So seek support. Again, making bad habits impossible means you can uh, restructure your environment you can Im implement constraints or rules you know to make your those those bad habits difficult to indulge you can find substitute and seek support or accountability partner you know make good habits easy and bad habits impossible is you know this principle that i brought up, brought up today is that you know, it's it's based on the idea that habits are strongly influenced by environment. By manipulating, by taking control or designing our environment, you know, it helps us enhance those desirable behavior easier, easier to perform. And those undesirable behavior harder. So when we take control to change in our, in our environment, which is favorable to positive habits, it will enhance our effort and our commitment as well as our thinking into you know to a positive direction, to a positive outcome, to a successful outcome, making us a better person, you know, chasing our big goals or whatever goals you have. So make you know it, it enhances the probability or increases the probability of getting a good results out from your effort to become a better person, the best version, version of you, you know, doing the positive habits. So once again, if you love this uh, message today, you can share it to your family and friends. You can follow me in Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. This is Anne of Reinforcement Club. Thank you very much for your time and have a lovely Sunday. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.